Well, extraordinary police work led to the capture of Ahmed Khan Rahami. Two random New Yorkers may have prevented the second device from detonating. Murray Weiss, columnist and criminal justice editor for DNA Info, is here with that story. Murray, I love this story. You tell it well. Lay it out for us. What happened on Saturday night? Well, here's the chronological story. At the outset, uh, the terrorist suspect, he comes up 23rd Street with a couple of wheelies, these uh, airline overhead bag kind of stuff. He leaves one of them in front of a dumpster or next to a dumpster on 23rd Street. And then he walks around four blocks to 27th Street and he leaves a second one there. Now, how is that all known? The police department recovered hours and hours of video from all different kinds of places. And they began to put it together to, to see who is where and what's where. Well, on 27th Street, they see two young men come walking down the street after the overhead luggage piece is left on the street. They see it, and it looks kind of new and nice, so they decide to take a look at it. They grab it, they actually pick it up, examine it, open it, and they find inside this dilapidated crockpot crock pot with tape and a cell phone to it. They put it in a white trash bag and just kind of dump it on the side of the road, and then they're seen walking the wheelie away, and they take it. So the larger crisis of a second bombing may have been in, uh, averted by two guys essentially ripping off a suitcase they found on the street? Exactly. And what's critical, what's critical about it, it's funny how luck plays a role in every big case. By, him, by them dropping it, they probably dislodged the detonator. Which, in, which, of course, prevented the device from going off. The one on 23rd Street exploded. Clearly, they were going to detonate the one on 27th Street. But the fact that it didn't go off gave the law enforcement people an undetonated bomb that included the cell phone, which was going to be called that actually ignites the device. So the fact that they had it completely intact, they had the cell phone. And the cell phone, they quickly traced to the suspect's family, and that was the big clue that led to his capture. So here's the question, though. Are, are these two individuals uh, heroes or kind of lucky dopes? I mean, did they notify police about the crockpot, or they just walked off with the upcycled roller board? No, they had no idea that uh, crockpot means maybe bomb. They were two guys out on a Saturday night, most likely, walking down, walking through Chelsea. They saw something that was discarded that was relatively new, I guess, or they thought they could use it. And they took it. The police want to find them and talk to them just to make sure that they weren't part of the plot. But that's what it appears. There is a, another chapter to this, and it, uh, also just a great detail really makes this a full-on New York story, New York area story. In New Jersey, the pipe bombs in a backpack, they were discovered by two other men. Tell us about that case. Well, they, they, they were. this was near trains. This was near a train station. And they found, like, this sort of bag full of the bombs. And they, of course, unlike these people, they recognize, like, we've got bombs that happen. Now they found the little satchel with other ones. So they called the police, and the police came. And ultimately, one of the, one of the devices exploded while the, while the bomb squad was dealing with it. I love that particular aspect of the story, because here we have two individuals. They're described as homeless. At the very least, they're, they're vagrant. They're destitute. They're looking for food. They're looking for money. They're looking for anything in the trash late at night. And they end up saving the lives, most likely, of anyone who would have been on that platform. And those people on the platform, of course, are probably looking right past those same homeless people during the day. And yet they did this incredibly generous and surprisingly patriotic thing. Don't you think? Yeah, no, totally. I think, you know, it's a great happenstance that two people who are in need actually provided the kind of uh, public service that most people wouldn't think that they're capable of and nobody would pay attention to. Actually, they were a bit of the opposite of the guys in New York who right, were out right. on Saturday night. So, I mean, we live in the age when that kind of good deed is typically highlighted. There are GoFundMe pages. There are other kinds of just sort of drives to support people like that. Do we know anything about the two gentlemen in Elizabeth, New Jersey, their names, what their issues are, and are they getting help in any way? Well, I'm not aware that anybody is giving them help uh, at this time. I'm not familiar with, uh, with uh, whether there's a GoFund a uh, GoFund uh, creation for Which them. Which is but like I a am, big digital shake me cup that yeah. says, please change here. Well, that would be really nice if they got them. But I do know that the, that the authorities in New York are looking for the two guys. And they're probably going to put out their pictures who uh, took the little uh, suitcase with them and left the bomb <laughs> behind.
<laughs> it's unbelievable. It's like something out of Coming to America. But, you know, you hear that two wrongs don't make a right, but in this case, two wrongs, they did, ended up with a right, you know? The attempted bombing, the theft, put those t together, and you end up with safety as the end result. Murray Weiss from DNA Info, thank you very much. It's a great story. Appreciate it. Pleasure to be here. Quick addendum to that story. If you didn't catch it, the bomb on the train tracks in Elizabeth, New Jersey, it was discovered late at night by two men described as homeless. They were scavenging or rummaging in the trash when they found this backpack and they reported it to police, most likely averting a much larger crisis had that bomb gone off at rush hour the next morning. What's amazing about this particular story is we have two individuals, homeless individuals, the kind of people that the, the individuals on that train track look past on a daily basis, people with not a strong stake in, in society as it currently stands, and yet they, they took this step to significantly save lives, and the mayor there in Elizabeth has commended them. But here's the thing. We don't know their names. We don't know how they became homeless. We know nothing about them. If you are watching this right now and you know their names, you know their stories, please tweet CBS News or tweet me personally. We want to tell that tale. We want to potentially help them if there's helping to be done. And at the very least, we want to say thank you.